Today, we're going to talk about, um, we're going to talk about heaven. Heaven. And that, that, and that, 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 I mean, that's a good thing to talk about. Um, I was thinking about this. I was thinking about how uh, radical, uh, radical Islam, how they can convince somebody to strap explosives on themselves and, and give their life. And they, they do that because of a promise of something in the future, right? The, the, a promise of an afterlife. They're willing to give their life for something and we know it to be untrue, we know it to be a lie, but that's how they're able to do that. And I think, what a sad testimony of the church that we don't know enough about where we're headed, that we can't, we can't oftentimes offer people the hope that God wants us to offer them. Um, how many know that we have a reason to lay down our life? Amen. There's something that we have that is spectacular. And, 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 and so we're going to talk about it today. So the title is Heaven, Our Eternal Home, or Is It? Um, and so we're gonna, I'm just going to answer. I'm going to go pretty fast in, in answering several, que- several questions. And, and then I got a bonus question at the end. Everybody say bonus. bonus. I got a bonus question at the end. Um, so uh, just a few, I'm going to go to a bunch of scriptures. I'll give you a few. Uh, obviously, we're going to be in Revelation a little bit. Um, I promise we'll, we, won't, we won't do the creepy stuff. All right. Um, there's two, be- two types of people, actually three types of people. There's, there's the person who never goes to Revelation because it freaks them out. I don't know if that's you, but uh, there's, there's that person. Then there's the person who that's the only book they read. And we probably all know someone like that. Like, they, like everything is, they, they, they end up prophecy and everything, um, everything they do and everything they see in scripture has something to do with revelation. Um, let me just say, both of those are out of balance. Um, the Bible says, blessed is, is the man who reads and understands this, this book. And so, so there's a balance there. And, um, and we're to take the whole counsel of God. So we're not to camp out in Revelation forever and ever and ever and ever, but we're to understand it. And so today we're going to share a little bit about that. So uh, uh, the end of Revelation, we'll, we'll, um, uh, we'll go to Re- Revelation 21, Revelation 22. You can mark that in your Bible. That'll be at the very end um, of, of your Bible. Um, 1 Corinthians, we'll go to 1 Corinthians 15, 2 Corinthians 5, and... Um, and then we'll go to Romans chapter 10 as well. And um, let's just open in prayer. Father, we, we thank you for this day. And we thank you for this place, Jesus, that you have gone to prepare for us. We have a lot of things, a lot of, a lot of images that are presented to us about this place. From the media, from, from Hollywood, from, from tradition. And God, I just pray that we set all of that aside today. And we just go to look at your word, <laughs> you live there. You know exactly what it's, what it's like. And so, Father, I just pray that, that our eyes would be open uh, for us to see the reward that awaits those who know you. Speak to us today in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, so I've, I just got some questions. So like 10 questions, the top 10 questions about heaven. And um, we're going to answer them. So will, will we have a body in heaven? Will we have bodies in heaven, and there's some that that um, that have this idea that you know we're we're spirit beings, and and we are spirit beings, but we're just like puffs of air, you know, and and um, it's like an ethereal type thing that that. Um, so let's go to scripture. It says in First Corinthians chapter fifteen. First Corinthians chapter fifteen. Will we have a body? Will we have bodies in heaven? Um, so verse forty-seven. In this passage of scripture is talking about. Uh, bodies. It's t- and so if you read the, this 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 whole passage here, it's talking about um, everything has a has a body, has a structure to it, and um, and so um, and so that um, that's what this passage is about, and, it, and it's speaking about our spiritual being, our spiritual body. Everybody say body, our spiritual body and our our physical body. And so um, let's look at what it says in verse forty seven. The first man was of the earth. Made of dust, right? Uh, God took dust of the ground and formed it, and it became a man. And he breathed the breath of life into it. And then it says uh, that the second man is, um, I'm sorry, the second man is the Lord from heaven. Everybody say, from heaven. 
So you have one that's from dust and one that's from heaven. Uh, one that's from earth and one that's from heaven. What do we call, what do we call the ground underneath it? We call it earth. And so we have one that's made of earth, one that's made of heaven. The first man made of dust from the earth, the second man made of heaven, made from heaven. And um, as was the man of dust, so also are those who are, who are made of dust. And as is the heavenly man, so also are those who are heavenly. And as we have borne the image of the man of dust, we shall also bear the image, everybody say image, an image is something that's real and tangible, right? So we'll, we'll bear the image of the heavenly man. Um, all throughout Revelation, um, we're talked, we, we hear, um, um, we'll read a scripture here in just a moment, but all throughout Revelation, it talks about and white robes were given to them, and they had their robes washed. Um, okay, you, you don't have to wear a robe if you don't have a body. So you got to have something, you got to have something to have the robe on you, all right? I mean, God's not going to give you a robe and you're, you're going to go, what do I do with this? I, I, I don't, so we have a, there is a, there's a form to us and, um, and so we have, we have a body. Um, it's, it's not like, you know, this, this idea of nirvana is that we, 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 we obtain this and, and it's this state of nothingness. Well, that's not, that's not heaven. That's not, that's not um, our, our end destination. Um, uh, our earthly body is made of dust. It's made of this earthly substance. And when we die, what happens to our body? It turns back to dust. Ashes to ashes, dust to dust. It goes back to dust. If you go see, you know, if you go dig up, you know, great grandma Sally, um, you're going to find she, she there, there ain't a whole lot left, right? Um, she, she, we're put into the ground and, and our bodies decay. Some people, some people um, have their bodies cremated. Um, um, whatever the case is, we go back to dust because that's what we're formed from. But there was something in Adam, there, there was something that God put into Adam. Um, and, and, we talk, and we were talking about this second man, uh, uh, this, he, this man of heaven, Jesus, and this spirit life that is made up of a substance that's not dust. It's a substance from heaven. So on this earth, we're made up of an earthly substance. Our heavenly body is made up of a heavenly substance. Um, uh, consider this for a moment. Jesus was resurrected. Jesus was resurrected and he had a body. This body walked through a wall. Um, but he had scars, he had scars on his, on his hands and his feet. He had a, he had a body. There was a, he was having a conversation with two of the disciples and then he disappeared. He had, there was a glorified, there's a glorified body that we have. And he, here's, here's a good thing about it. Um, uh, you can eat bonbons and not get fat. <laughs> I don't know. That, that's not in scripture. I don't really know that. Uh, or will bonbons be in heaven? That's another, that's another question I will not answer today. I don't know. Um, uh, you think of bonbons. What about like just some nice bluebell ice cream? You know? uh, there will be bluebell in heaven. Um, I'm, I'm, I know that. So I had a vision. No. Um, the, um, <laughs> I mean, the devil tried to not, you know, a couple of years ago, the devil tried to shut him down, but God. <laughs> that may be a stretch. That may be a bit of a stretch. Um, uh, from, from dust we come, to dust our natural body goes. Jesus said, unless a man be born again, he can't enter. He can't see the kingdom of heaven. That's why you have to be born again. It's because this body, this body is made of something that's corruptible. We have to be born of something that's incorruptible. Jesus said, if we're born again, we'll have eternal life. If we believe on him, we will never die. Well, we know that this body, I've been to enough funerals to know that this body shuts down. But there is a spirit body that is more real than this body. And it, and it, will, go, um, it will go and exist forever. And so, uh, so we will. We will have a body, but the good thing is 
that it won't be tainted, it won't be this, it won't be this body, but it will be, we, we will have substance. We will have substance. And so, um, um, everybody say, that's a good thing. It's not a good, it, what is not good is to think that we become noth- nothing. I, I don't know how that is like a good thing. So the whole idea of this nirvana experience um, doesn't make sense. I am not attempting or achieving um, or trying to achieve nothingness. Amen. Um, I think I, took, I, did, I just put question number two away. Um, what happens when we die and we're waiting for the Lord to return? Have you ever thought about that? What, what happens when we die and we're waiting? Jesus hasn't come. So what happens to all those loved ones that have died? What, what happens to them? I have, a, I have an aunt who, who, uh, who passed away several years ago in West Virginia. So she's already at a little higher than most because she's in, buried up uh, uh, on, uh, in the mountains. And, um, but she wanted, to, she wanted to be born. I mean, she wanted to be buried. Um, she wanted to be buried above the ground in one of those mausoleums. Yeah, so, you know, and like those tombs, you know, their tombs. Now, I just remember when we were in there, I was thinking, you know, at her funeral, I was thinking, man, somebody's seal on this tomb has, has gone bad because it was bad. And, uh, but anyway, one of the reasons that she would joke about this, she would joke about it because when the dead in Christ shall rise, she wanted to be ahead of everybody else. You know, she's, she's up a little higher. And, uh, I don't know if that that works, but you know. Um, anyway, so so what what happens when we die, and we're we're waiting for the Lord's return? In Second Corinthians chapter five verse eight, it says this: We are confident, yes, well pleased, rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Um, there are some that believe that we just sleep for forever and ever and ever until. Um, And and I'll show you some more evidence of that in just a few minutes, but um, um, that we just, we're just asleep until Jesus comes back. But our spirit never dies. So when we come to know Jesus, our body, and and so, you know, a lot of times when I go to a funeral, we have this, we have this weird, um, and and some of you are like, you, you probably haven't thought about this, but some of you, this has been something you've thought was weird your entire life. And so when someone dies, we have, we call it a wake or, or th- I don't get this. We, <laughs> we call it the visitation. Anybody heard that term, the visitation? So we go and we like, I know we visit the family members, but we go to visit the departed body in the casket. I had, I had aunts that would take pictures. So they put it in their scrapbook. I never understood that. Here's the reason is because, and, and people would say, don't they look good? Don't you think they did a good job fixing them up? And I thought, they're dead. They kind of look dead. I, just, I mean, they, just, they, they, I don't particularly like, and I do, you know, I've done a lot of funerals. And, um, and I generally, when I go to a funeral, I don't do the walk by. Um, I'll greet the family and stuff, but I really, I don't, that's not the way I want to remember them because they're not there. They, they are somewhere, their spirit is somewhere else. Their spirit's not hovering like a ghost, you know, their spirit's not offering um, to be absent from the bodies, to be present with our Lord. And so, so there is a, there is a, there's a time period in there where, um, where there's a, there's a way, but they're not, they're not, they're not hanging out somewhere between heaven and earth in this place called purgatory until, until Jesus comes and, and at the end of the age. And so I want you to understand that when we die, when we die, we're not hovering over the casket. We're not, we're not, we're not hovering um, in the hospital we died or the home we died in, um, um, haunting people. That's, that, okay, we're not, that's not the case. Um, and so um, I, some people were like, well, I met, you know, I saw my Uncle Johnny. And, uh, you know, well, you know, there are familiar spirits. There, there are such things as, as familiar spirits. And, and, um, and there's an instance in Scripture where there's a, you know, I, I don't want to get into that. Anyway, so... Um, Jesus promised that those who believe in him will never die. So we've been promised that when our physical body goes to sleep, by the way, that's what Jesus said constantly, that, 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 and so did Paul, that uh, remember when Lazarus died and Jesus said he's asleep. And, and the disciples were like, well, if he's sleeping, then he's going to be feeling better. He's going he gonna to sleep off the fever. And Jesus was like, dude, okay, he's dead. So, 
So he had to explain to them. But Jesus understood, Jesus understood that, that, that there, he understood what death really is. And, and as a believer, we don't, we don't die. Our physical body ceases to, uh, to breathe and pump blood, but our spirit is alive. It is alive. And how many has ever heard of people that have out of, out of, they call them out of body experiences? And, you know, I think you have to be very careful um, with, with some of this. But, but there are people who, who talk about, um, you know, being in the presence of God and seeing things. And, um, and so I, I think that lines up with, with, um, with some of Scripture. And, and like I said, you have to be very careful with someone's experience validating or, or especially when it steers outside of the word of God. Um, we have to be very careful. This is our, how many know this is our truth filter. We filter everything through this. And, and if it doesn't line up with this, then maybe that experience wasn't exactly the way you thought it was, or maybe it was something other than what you thought it was. Um, maybe, uh, anyway. Um, so while our physical body goes back to the dust, our heavenly substance, our spirit man is um, in the presence of God. Will we, will we be able um, to talk to people? Will we be able to communicate with, with one another in heaven? In Revelation chapter 6, verse 9. There's a passage. We're going to get a lot out of this, this, this little passage here. And, um, will we be able to... Um, and so, you know, there's um, pictures that we see of, of little um, angelic babies naked with bows and arrows and, um, you know... And by the way, that, that scripture does, I mean, that picture doesn't come from scripture. Um, probably more along the lines of Greek mythology. But um, or, and we get this picture of us kind of hanging out on a cloud, playing a harp. Um, your prerequisite for you going to heaven is not that you learn how to play a harp. I personally believe that David, uh, he might have a harp, but if he does, um, he's probably got a distortion pedal hooked to it. Um, and uh, because what I do know is there will be electric guitars in heaven. Um, I, f- I found that in a modern translation of the Bible. No, I'm just kidding. That was a joke. That was, um, we're not just going to hang out on a cloud and play harps, okay? It's, that's not what we're going to do. We can't, we can't communicate with one another. Revelation chapter 6, verse 9 says this. When he opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar, the altar is, is a place in the temple, under the altar... The souls of those who had been slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they, they held. And they cried with a loud voice saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, until you judge and avenge our blood on those who dwell on the earth? So if they're, if they're talking about someone who dwells on the earth, it would seem that they're not on the earth right now. He's talking. He's talking to the Lord. These, these, these martyrs are talking to the Lord. And John sees this and they're in the altar. They're, they're in... Um, 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 in heaven. And then he says, then a, then a white robe was given to them, each of them, because they have a body to put the robe on. Um, and it was said to them that they should rest a little while longer until both the number of their fellow servants and their brethren who, were, who would be killed as they were was completed. And, um, and so as you read that, just hope that you're not one of those brethren that will be killed. <laughs> yeah, amen. Amen. Uh, Although, um, you know, whatever we give up for the Lord, we, we will never give up more than what we get. Never. And these, these individuals will be blessed, supernaturally blessed. And martyrs are special, uh, special to the Lord. So there's these martyrs. And um, let me just say, they're communicating. They're, they're talking. He said, actually, with a loud voice. How many ever been in church and you got to be really quiet? God, everything's got to be really quiet, and um, don't the music can't music can't be too loud. And um, the, um, in heaven, there's loud music, and there's loud voices. There's people that um, even God's loud. His voice is like the uh, like the sound of many waters. How many's ever been to a waterfall? I haven't been to Niagara Falls. Anybody been there? Is it loud? Yeah, well, it goes, it's, it's the sound of many waters. And so it, it is, if you, if you have to have quiet to have peace, you're going to be in trouble. Because, because there are loud, there is silence in heaven. We, we read about that in scripture. But there's also lots of noise in heaven. And so um, 
Um, it, it, but anyway, they're able to communicate. These saints communicate with the Lord. Um, John's vision of heaven records several times when he sees saints praising and worshiping the Lord. They're saying something out of their mouth. So we're not in this state of nothingness. We are, we are able to communicate. We're able to praise the Lord. We're able to communicate with one another. And um, um, I, I, I would say, go on, and I know he's in a vision, but we have an angel speaking to John throughout the whole throughout the whole narrative of Revelation. And so we know that there's communication um, going on in, in this place we call heaven. Um, a, a, few things, a few other things, we're going to go through these really quick, that we get from this scripture. Will we know everything? There's some people that are like, well, you know, when we get to heaven, there'll be no, no reason to learn anything else. Well, I don't think we probably don't need to learn calculus anymore. That, everybody say, thank God. I don't know that for a fact. You might have to. I don't know. Um, but, um, but let me just say this. These saints that we just read about in Scripture don't know something. They don't know. They don't know when the time is that the Lord's going to avenge their death or judge, pour out judgment on those who killed them. They don't know that. And so there is this there, there is, there's, there's a couple of passages of scriptures that I think are taken out of context, and we can read those um, real quick about this whole idea that when we get to heaven, we'll know everything. Um, we, are, we do not become omniscient. I don't believe we become omniscient. It doesn't, doesn't mean that we won't know things that we don't know now, but um, how many know we're not God? He's omniscient. And, of course, the more we get to know him, the more we will know. But this is what Scripture says in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 12. For now we see in a mirror dimly. In other words, we, can't, we don't see everything. We don't understand everything. But then face to face. But this is talking about in a relationship with God. And so this is what now I know in part. How many, ever, how many know that along your, on your journey with the Lord... There are things you know about him today that you might not have known 10 years ago. You know him better today than you did 10 years ago. But this is, so listen, right now, I'm limited, I'm limited in how well I know him. But there will come a day, that, listen to what it says, now I know in part, but then I shall know just also, or just as I also am known. God knows you. God knows you deeply and intimately. I would say that God knows you better than you know yourself. This passage is saying there's coming a day when there are things that you don't know about God that you will know because you will, you will, he, you will see him face to face. There will, be a, there will be an encounter and an intimacy with God that you do not have right now. And, and, and so you will know things about him. There will be questions that you have that will be answered. Not by me standing up here preaching, but because you know him. You will know him. And so that's what that scripture is talking about. Your knowledge of God and your relationship with God, you will understand things that he did that you couldn't understand why he did it. But when you get there, you'll see. You'll understand why he did it. You'll understand why he poured out judgment here and, and didn't hear. You'll understand why he did this and, and why he did that. And there are times when he does things, and some of us, and this is what we'll say, is his ways are higher than our ways. But there will come a day when we will stand before him and we will know him. We will know more about his character and his personality than we ever did here. I mean, longing for that day. That's called heaven. That's a good thing. The one we serve and the one we love, we will know him better than we ever have before. And then look at what it says in 1 John verse 3, or chapter 3, verse 2. Beloved, now we are children of God, and it has not yet been revealed what we shall be. But we know that when he is revealed, we shall, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Isn't that awesome? How many, how many are longing for that day? Yeah. All right, it's good to long for that day. It's, it's okay to pray that he comes quickly. In fact, the scripture tells us to do that. It's okay. What's not okay is to have an escape mentality that, that um, Lord, get us out of here before everything comes crashing down because there's a work to do. 
There's still a work to do. Yeah, Lord, come quickly, and we'll talk about um, our part in that in just a moment. So we, we, won't, we won't know everything, but we'll know more. Um, and there will be some things that we know now that we don't have to know then. Amen? I mean, come on, you went through school, and you're like, why do I have to diagram sentences? It doesn't make any sense. Like, I'm going to write like this when I'm older? I get it. I understand. Listen, when you get to heaven, I don't think you're going to have to diagram sentences. Amen. Amen. Okay. Those kids that are behind us that, that don't have to diagram, they don't understand how good they're going to have it, right? Um, the next thing is, will we know what's happening on earth? Is it, there's this idea that when we get to heaven, that we, we, we will, earth will not matter to us at all, and we won't know what's going on on the earth. Well, let me just say this, that those, those saints, those martyrs we just read about, they knew what was going on on earth because they knew that, that judgment had not been poured on those who had murdered them. They knew that. So, so they were aware of the fact that that had not happened. Um, Hebrews chapter 12, this is a, a pretty popular scripture, um, uh, verse 1. Therefore, and this is right after, this is right after the, the, hall, of, the hall of faith, uh, hall of, God's hall of faith. It, 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 there's, a, there's a huge passage of scripture, uh, Hebrews chapter 11, is all about these great saints that had gone before. These great men and women of God who, who, um, who were great uh, men and women of faith. And, and then it goes right into this after talking about those men and women. This is what it says. It says, therefore, we also, we also, just like these men and women, these also, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses. What's a witness? It's somebody who's seen something, experienced something. Someone who has, an eye, who has, who has been an eyewitness to something. Someone who's, he's, the writer here is saying that we are surrounded by a cloud of witnesses. There's a group of people surrounding us that have been there, done that, and they're in heaven and they're watching us, cheering us on from the mezzanine. They, they, they know what's going on. They see what's happening. I'm, I'm wondering if great grandma who's, who, who prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed for you to get saved saw, saw the day that you came and, and, and met the Lord and, and made a commitment to him, how many, how many think that the Lord, you think the Lord would show them that? I believe that. We're surrounded by this great cloud of witnesses. So let us lay aside every weight in the sin which so easily ensnares us and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. So do, do, we, do we recognize, do we understand what's going on um, uh, on earth? And, um, and then this next question, the last thing I want to get from that uh, passage out of Revelation 6. Will we, will we remember our lives on earth? Will we remember our lives on earth? Let me just say this. Do you think Jesus remembers his life on earth? <laughs> yeah, he's still got the scars from it. So Jesus remembers his life on earth. Let me just say this. These martyrs mentioned in, in Revelation 6, do they remember anything? <laughs> yeah, they remember, they remember they were murdered for the cause of Christ. They remember that. They, they, they have knowledge of the fact that they were murdered um, for the cause of Christ. Here, here's the point. They're not tormented by it. When we get to heaven, memories aren't going to torment you. You're going to be free. By the way, you can live on this earth not tormented by your memories. Amen. How many how many's been set free by things in your past that used to torment you? It's the same thing. Now, do you remember them? Yeah, you remember them. But but when we get to heaven, it's not like God like, you know, goes like this across our head and he, you know, he um, he um, what, what, do you, what do you say when you uh, come on IT guys, um, when you Wipe, yeah, <laughs> thank you. That, whoa, what a hard word. When you wipe a hard drive, God doesn't do that. He doesn't do that. We have, we, we have victory. We have victory, and we understand the grace and the mercy of God and his overcoming power in our life. We overcome by the, word of our, by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. Our testimony is this is what happened. This is what God did. You, don't, you will not forget what God has done for you. You're not going to forget that. 
And so we will remember things that, but it will not torment us. It will not control us. We will be free from all the baggage that those memories used to, um, um, used to torment us with. Isn't that awesome? That's heaven. What's awesome is we can live in that kind of freedom today. That, that's, that's heaven coming to earth. Will we have emotions? Will we have emotions? Um, so does God have emotions? So we're like him. So will we have emotions? Um, and, I, and I understand the whole, you know, the, the, the spirit, soul, body, the mind, will, emotions. We, we, we will have emotions. We will, they won't control us. Emotions won't control you. Let me ask you, does, does God get angry? Absolutely. We, we, saw, we saw, see in Scripture where Jesus got angry. So the Scripture says to be angry and sin not. It doesn't mean that we don't have emotions. So we, we, we will have emotions. I, I, I mentioned this earlier, but Luke chapter 15, verse 7. I, this sounds like emotion to me. I say to you that likewise, there will be more joy, everybody say joy, more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than uh, over 99 just persons who need no repentance. That sounds like it might be a party. That's what it sounds like. It sounds like, it sounds like there is something that happens in heaven when God says, strike up the band. We, we had somebody that just came, woo, somebody just came, just came home. We go, we go throw a party. Remember when the, the prodigal came home, what did the father do? He threw a party. He threw a party. There is a, there's a party in heaven when one sinner comes, comes to know Jesus. Listen, God, okay. We raised, we raised, um, uh, we, we, Ashley, right? We raised Ashley out of the water. And then, boom, the music started. This is amazing. And so we go into this celebration. Let me just say this. It does not compare with the celebration that happened in heaven. It does, does not compare. There is, this is what it's saying. There is no comparison. There is, that's what the scripture says. There is no comparison anywhere. There is no comparison to the party that's thrown in heaven when one, when one sinner comes to know Jesus. There's no comparison there is more joy there than any other place at any other time. Um, so let me just ask you this. If great grandma was praying for you to get saved, do you think she's part of that party? Yeah. What, what, what's the party for? Oh, little Johnny just got saved. I was praying for him my whole life. Oh, I didn't ever think he was going to make it. Woo. Thank God he made it. I was beginning to wonder, you know, <laughs> how, how excited would you be if a, if a loved one came to know Jesus? How excited would you be? And let me just say this. Let me just say this, that um, James and Dory have a bounce in their step this morning. They do. They're, they they She called me yesterday, because we hadn't set up the baptism. She called me yesterday, you know me? You want me to set up the baptism? And I'm like, no, we'll get it. Don't worry. Why? Because she's excited. There is joy in heaven. There are emotions. There are emotions that erupt in heaven when a sinner comes to know Jesus. There's no tears in heaven. I know, I know Eric Clapton you know, wrote that song. But there's no, there's, he, he's going to wipe the tears. He's going to wipe the tears from your eyes. There's joy in heaven. Will we know people? Will we, will we know people? Um, Matthew chapter 8, verse 11. It says this, And I say to you that many will come from the east and west and sit down with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. Now, you know, maybe I'm taking a little liberty with this scripture, but it says they'll sit down with them. I don't, I, don't, I don't think it's just saying that they're in the family. I think they're going to be able to... I, when I sit down with somebody, I sit down with them. And generally speaking, and my kids can bear witness to this, generally speaking, Benjamin's already shaking his head yes because he knows what I'm going to say. Generally speaking, that's a long sitting time. I love to hang out with people. I love to get to know them. I, 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 I love hearing their stories. I want to get to know them. I love hanging out with people. If I could hang out with people 24-7, I'd hang out with people 24-7. I love to be around people. 
Let me, let me just say, in heaven, you will know people. I mean, you, you will know them. You will, you will know, you will know Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. You will know great grandma. You will know great grandpa. The ones that are there, you will know them. How many think you're going to know Jesus? Uh, right, how many has ever heard that song, I dream, I... What, how does it go? Come on, help me, Brent. The, the, um, um, the city, and I walk down the gates of that, the streets of that city. Come on, yeah, come on, y'all don't... I saw... Whatever. Um, I can't even remember words to the songs I write, so I, I don't know why I ever... I've been trying to go into a song and think... Um, we, we, will, we will know them, and you get to hang out with them, uh, and you get to go up to Peter, and here's the problem is, I have preached about these guys, and I'm on, I, um, um, I've been hard on a few of them. Y'all have witnessed that, right? And probably the hardest one is Peter. I'm, I'm gonna have to, uh, I'm, I'm, I may have to stay away from Peter a little bit. <laughs> I've been pretty hard on Peter. <laughs> <laughs> right, 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 right. According to, he's at the pearly gate, according to most jokes, right? Um, anyway, so, so Peter, yeah, anyway, uh, we're going to know people. Who's going to be there? Question 10. Uh, who's going to be there? We're almost through. Who's going to be there? Romans 10, verse, 11, uh, verse 13. This is what it says. For whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Whoever, whoever, whoever. Who's, who's heaven for? Whoever. Whoever, in Revelation it says, whoever wants a drink from this water can have a drink from this water. Whoever, here's the thing is, that choice has got to be made in this lifetime. You can't, you can't wait to make that choice when, when, when you're gone. That choice has to be made here. God gives you a lifetime to make that choice. Here's what's awesome is there's some buzzer beaters in the kingdom. There are people that are on their deathbed that, can't, that, that are like, um, you know what, I'm re- this is when I go into a hospital and there's somebody seriously ill, um, I go there, man. I am going there with them. Are you are you good with Jesus? Do you want me to, you want me to pray with you? Um, and most, most, I have, I have never at any, at any time in my life had anyone that's like facing death told me, yeah, no, don't pray. Most of them are like, if I'm wrong, if I've been wrong my whole life, I, I want to make sure right now. They're, they're buzzer beaters. That's awesome. The, the thief on the cross, the thief on the, remember me when you come into your kingdom. You'll be with, today, you'll be with me in paradise. Buzzer beater. Those are awesome. Those are awesome. The tragedy in that is that they could have experienced such a great life here if they wouldn't have waited. Uh, years ago, there was a, there was a, um, a, a song that, um, um, that someone sang. I worked at the radio station. It was a local guy, and it, the song was, don't give your flesh, don't give your flesh to the devil and just give God the bones. In other words, spend your whole life living for the devil, and at the end of, that, that is a tragedy, but it's also, it's also an awesome thing when somebody comes to know the Lord at the very end. Um, thank God for his grace and his mercy, right? Um, so who's going to be there? Whoever, whoever's saved, whoever knows him and has made him um, Lord of their life. And, um, and then the last question, will we spend eternity? Here's the bonus question. Will we spend eternity in heaven? Will we spend eternity in heaven? Um, well, let's look at some scriptures. Um, go to Revelation chapter 21. Let me, let me just, let me, before Revelation 21, let me just tell you about uh, a few chapters before in, in Revelation. It talks, about, um, it talks about the second coming of Jesus. It talks about him establishing his kingdom um, on this earth. Jesus is coming back. Let me just say that again. Jesus is coming back. He's not just coming halfway. He's not just coming halfway. He's going to come all the way back. Jesus is coming back. Um, and there's a lot of different beliefs in Scripture. And I'm not going to get into some of the eschatology about are you, you know, are you pre-trib, mid-trib, post-trib, no-trib, you, whatever. You know, um, there are some people, I will say this, I, I will say this. Um, I, I've, heard, I've heard a lot of those arguments. I, I will. I, I will. There's one argument I really struggle with, and that is that it's all been fulfilled already. I, I struggle with that one because um, because in Revelation it talks about a new heaven and new earth, and we ain't there yet. I'm just saying we ain't there yet. 
And so it talks about an earthquake unlike this world has ever seen that, that, uh, that destroys the mountains. That has, we, we, there's no evidence of that happening yet. Um, so, um, um, so I don't know where you're at as far as, you know, the, the rapture theology and if, if you believe in it, if you don't believe in it, if you believe you're going to be on the first trip out, the second trip out, or the third trip. I don't, it, it does, here's, the, here's what I think. Here's what I think. That should never divide the body of Christ. And what's sad is it does. It does divide us. And, and people get very, very argumentative on things that, that um, I wish Jesus would have said. I wish he would have said this. I, I wish it would have come out of Jesus' mouth. I wish he would have said that this is how it's going to play out at the end is, um, is you're going to, um, as a believer, um, you're going to be raptured. I wish he would have said that. I wish you, you will be raptured out of here. And then that's going to be like before like these seven years that get really bad. And then the seven years are just for the Jews to come back to the Lord. And it's going to be really, really, really bad. But you're going to be raptured out of here. And, but Jesus didn't say it that clearly. And I think the reason why is so that we can love our brothers when we have a differing opinion when it comes to the end times. Here's the thing we all know and we should all agree on is Jesus is coming back. He's coming back. And there is no, there is, that is a non-negotiable. Jesus is coming back. And he's coming all the way back and he's going to set up a kingdom on this earth. And, um, and so now let's, let's move. Let's, so if Jesus is setting up a kingdom on this earth. Who's going to be on this earth? So let's, let's read in Revelation chapter 21. This is after the thousand year reign, but I want you to see something in Revelation chapter 21, verse one. Now I saw a new heaven and a new earth. Everybody say new. new. There's a reason why it had to be new. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. Also, there was no more sea. Now, I don't know if that's literal sea, but that would be interesting. If, if there would be no, no, no more sea. Let, it sounds like that could be a little. So in prophetic language, sea, things coming out of the sea was the multitudes of people, the world coming out of the world. So I'll let you decide what you want to believe there. Um, but let's get on to some other things that we know absolutely positively um, paint a picture for us of what this looks like. Then I, John, saw the holy city new. Everybody say new. Not old Jerusalem, it's a new Jerusalem. New Jerusalem coming down out of heaven. If it's coming out of heaven, um, is it still in heaven? No, no, it's coming out of heaven. So there's, it's connected, but it's coming out of heaven. So there's a new Jerusalem that's coming out, down out from heaven, from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice, there's another loud voice, from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell, where is he going to dwell? With them. And they shall be his people. God himself will be with them and be their God. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death. Woohoo! No sorrow, nor crying. So while there might be emotions, we're gonna have to, we don't have to worry about those kind of emotions. There will not be that. Um, there, there shall be no more pain. Yes. Amen. And all the old people said, amen. <laughs> and was, I don't know what you're going to talk about. <laughs> oh, I can't believe the pastor just said that. Hey, I'm as gray headed as you. The ones that still have hair. Listen, there are times when I'm like, I, 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 my conversation is like, dude, that's all I talk about is my hip and my back and my, my sciatic nerve. Well, I'll tell you what my sciatic nerve does, you know. And then it's like, what are we talking about? You ever get in a one-up conversation? Well, my knee's been bothering you. Well, my knee, my shin, and my hip's been bothering me. Oh, yeah, well, it's crazy. Well, here's the, here's the joy. Here's the joy is we will have no more pain. Amen. Amen. For the former things have passed away. Now look at verse 9. Then one of the seven angels who had the seven bowls filled with the seven last plagues came to me and talked to me, saying, come, I will show you the bride, the lamb's wife. And he carried me away in the, in the spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me the great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending 
out of heaven from God. So he gets a real close look at it. Having the glory of God, her light was like a most precious stone, like a jasper stone, clear as crystal. Also, she had a great Um, She had a great and high wall with 12 gates and 12 angels at the gates and names written on them, which are the names of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. Three gates on the east, three gates on the north, three gates on the south, and three gates on the west. And then go down to verse 22. But I saw no temple in it. Wow, a holy place without a temple. Listen. For the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are its temple. The city had no need for the sun or the moon to shine. It does not need a sun. Isn't it interesting that God created light on the first day, but was it the fourth? How many days later did he, was it before he created the sun? God's city don't need the sun to shine. He doesn't need it. Isn't that awesome? The city had no need for the sun or the moon to shine in it, for the glory of God illuminated it. The lamb and its light and the nations of those who are saved shall walk in its light. And the kings of the earth bring their glory and honor into it. Its gates shall not be shut at all by day. We don't have to lock them. We don't have to shut them. Why? Because there ain't going to be no enemies trying to get us. We go, how, many, how many ever long, remember the day when you could leave your house unlocked and leave your car unlocked and not worry about it? And those days are over. No, they're not over. They're coming again. There's coming another day when you're not going to have to worry about that. But listen, it says that there shall be no night there. They shall, it's, there's not going to be any night. And you're like, I can't sleep. I won't be able to sleep. I got to have, I'm going to have, have room darkening shades if that's the case. And they shall bring the glory and the honor of the nations into it. But there shall by no means enter it anything that defiles or causes an abomination or a lie, but only those who are written in the Lamb's book of life. Yeah. It's, um, only those whose name's written in the Lamb's book of life gets to experience what we just read about. It's a perfect place. It's a, I mean, just, are we going to spend eternity in heaven? Heaven on earth. We're going to spend eternity. We'll, we'll go to heaven, but we're going to spend eternity. We're going to spend eternity on paradise that came from heaven. Heaven on earth. There's going to, I, I don't know what this it, it looks like. John did the best. I wish he was an artist and could have drawn us a picture. I, I, I do. I, I, I do. But he tried his best, but I see this connection with, with heaven and earth connected. And it almost like, it's, like it is like it was supposed to be in the beginning. Paradise. Paradise. That's what God has prepared for you. Jesus said, I'm going to prepare a place for you. And if I'm going to prepare a place for you, I'm coming to get you. He's prepared a place for each and every one of us. Um, now let me just ask you this in closing. Don't you want everybody to get in on this? There's a um, pen and teller, uh, the, the, the one that speaks. Is that pen? So he's an atheist. And um, he's very outspoken. And he, I heard him in a conversation one time. He said, the thing that bothers me the most is Christians who don't want to engage me in conversation because I'm an atheist and I'm, I'm wanting to debate them. And he, and he, this is what he said. How much do you have to hate me to believe, to believe that I am going to hell and not do what's necessary to engage me in conversation and give me the gospel? That's a tough, that's tough, isn't it? I don't want to debate people. I don't like to debate people. But man, I sure, there is a heaven. There's a literal heaven. There's a place in scripture called hell. There's a place called the lake of fire. And we don't have a lot of description about it, but torment and separation from God for all eternity would be horrible. As bad as it is here, how bad is that eternity? And why wouldn't I want to do whatever it takes to bring everybody into the kingdom? That's what Jesus did. There are going to be those who reject Let me just say this. In Revelation chapter 22, verse 6 is this. Then he said to me, 
And these words are faithful and true. And the Lord God of the holy prophets sent his angel to show his servants. This is why Revelation was written. This is why it was written. To show his servants the things which must shortly take place. Now, you think 2,000 years is a long time. That's not shortly. When God's, God's clock, that's still short. When you compare it to all eternity, 2,000 years is pretty short. So he's saying these things must be done shortly. And then listen to what it says. Behold, I am coming quickly. Behold, I am coming quickly. Behold, I am coming quickly. Blessed is he who keeps the words of the prophecy of this book. Matthew 24, 14. You don't have to turn to these scriptures. I'm just going to go through them really quick. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations. And then the end will come. And then the end will come. When we're in the last days. Yes, we're in the last days. We're in the last of the last days. When will the end come? When, when this gospel is preached in all the world to every nation, then Jesus says the end will come. No one knows the hour. Nobody knows the date. So, you know, whenever they, some guy writes a book, you know he's lying. Because yeah. <laughs> no one knows. Here, here's, here's the point I want to make with this. Is that there is something that has to take place. And there's someone who has the, who's been brought into the mission. We call it the great commission. I want you to mission with me, partner with me to take the gospel. Now let me read a passage of scripture that's going to challenge some of you. Verse, uh, chapter 3 of 2 Peter. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 11. How many want Jesus to come? Verse 11. Therefore, and this is talking about the end time. Therefore, since all these things will be dissolved, what manner of persons it's a gut check. What manner of persons ought you to be in holy conduct and godliness, looking for and hastening? Looking for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be dissolved, being on fire, and the elements will melt with fervent heat. While we do not know when Jesus is coming back. We do know he is coming back. And while we don't know the hour or the day, there is a job that we've been given to help prepare the way of the return of the Lord. There was a prophet in the old, that, that, that um, um, preceded Jesus named John the Baptist, and his job was to prepare the way of the Lord. We, as believers, have been given the ministry of reconciliation to prepare the way of the Lord. I don't understand the whole, how do a God that's got an appointed time, how can, how can we hasten that? I don't understand how that works, but I do know one thing. That until, the, until this message has reached everyone it's supposed to meet, reach, he's not coming. But the moment that happens, he's coming. So what part do you play? I'm going to ask you to bow your heads. I begin this year with a series or with a, with a, a sermon called Win One. <clears throat> and the goal was this year to really have on our hearts to win one person to the Lord, to have conversations with people, to be prepared to have conversations with people, to move past that uncomfortable thing that keeps us from having those conversations and go there. And and I just want to, have you forgotten that or are you working on that? Win one, just one. We had two that were baptized today and after making a commitment to the Lord, I'm wondering if we could have two next week and two the next week and 10 the next week and 15 the next week. I, I don't know. It doesn't, they don't have to come to know the Lord today. By the way, someone, I'm baptizing someone this afternoon as well. 
That's our job, is to reach the lost. That's why we're here. And the hurting. We get sidetracked with all these other things that in the end don't matter. It's all going to dissolve. Scripture says it's all going to dissolve. The one thing that's not going to dissolve is what's eternal, and that's mankind. So what are we, what are we doing? What are you, There's another baptism mentioned in Scripture. It's not just water baptism. There's another baptism mentioned in Scripture. I actually believe there's two other ones. One, one is baptism into Christ. One is baptism into water. And then there's another one that's talked about called baptism, baptism by fire. It's baptism into the Holy Spirit. It's a different baptism because there's a different medium in which you're baptized into. One is into water and one's into the person, the being of the Holy Spirit. And there's, there's, a, there's a promise that came with that baptism. There's a lot of manifestations and gifts and, and we, we all made, we major up on that. We're Spielfield Church. And so we major up on those manifestations. But the reality is there's one major thing that Jesus said, I want you to stay in Jerusalem until something happens, until you're endued with power. When the Holy Spirit comes upon you, he will empower you. He will give you boldness to be a witness. And so I want to invite you. We saw baptism today. I want to invite you. I want you. I want to invite you into another baptism today. There's not, you don't have to do a whole lot of things. It, the only thing that was necessary for them to be baptized in water was them to get in the water and let it happen. They didn't baptize themselves. You don't, bab, you don't, have, you don't have to do the work. You just have to say, God, I'm getting in. I'm getting in. So I'm going to do two things. If you don't know Jesus, I'm going to say a prayer. And if you're watching online, you can say this prayer with me, and then I'm going to say another prayer to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And if you've never received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, you may be saying, I don't even understand what that term means. You don't have to understand the terminology. Just understand that when the Holy Spirit, when you're baptized into the Holy Spirit, there's a boldness that comes to be a witness. We have a job to do. We need to be empowered to do it. So if you don't know Jesus, I'm going to pray a prayer. And I'm just going to ask you to pray this with me. So I'm going to ask those of you that are in here that do know Jesus to say this prayer with me. Just repeat after me. God, I thank you for sending Jesus to die for me. I believe in my heart that three days later, you raised him from the dead. I believe he is alive. I ask right now that Jesus become Lord of my life. Take over. My life belongs to you. I repent and I ask you to forgive me of all my sin and cleanse me of all unrighteousness. In Jesus' name. Now, if you want the baptism of the Holy Spirit, just, I'm just going to pray this prayer. I'm just going to ask you to pray. The Bible says, if you asked your dad for bread because you were hungry, would he give you a snake? And he'd, get, he'd give you what you asked for. How much more your uh, Heavenly Father give you the Holy Spirit to those who ask? You don't have to jump through hoops. Just ask. So I'm just going to pray this prayer, and I'm going to ask you to pray this with me. Father, I thank you for sending Jesus. And Jesus, I thank you for offering to give me the power of the Holy Spirit. And Jesus, right now, you're the baptizer. I put my, hand, my life in your hands and I ask you to baptize me in the Holy Spirit. Baptize me with fire so that I can have the boldness to do what you've called me to do. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm gonna ask you to stand. Prayer team, if you'll go ahead and come, they'll be here to pray with you and believe God with you. Listen, if you prayed that prayer for the Holy Spirit and that was the first time you ever prayed that, will you do me a favor? Will you let me know that? 
let me know that, and, I, and I'd like to share some things with you. So if that was the first time you prayed that prayer to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, I want to just give you some instruction on what, on what to do now. And so don't leave here. Just come up to me and say, hey, I prayed that prayer, and um, um, I just want to let you know that, that I prayed that prayer for the first time. And, uh, and obviously, if you prayed to receive Jesus, I want to know that too. So God bless, and as Brent comes to dismiss, just come down, and, and if you need prayer, they'll be here um, as long as you need them to be.